Hi, it's Tamsin. And hello, Guelph Moms. Welcome to the podcast that I made for you. This is the Tamsin Connects Guelph Moms podcast, and I made it in response to polls and comments and requests from the Guelph Mom Supporting Moms Facebook group. So you're probably a member of that if you're um, listening to this or, or watching this right now. This is a podcast. It's going to be available in video and audio form, as well as having the text available because I know you're busy and different people like to receive information in different ways. So I'm trying to take care of you. This is in response to comments about how the pandemic has made a sometimes already difficult situation even worse. We're talking about things like self-care, how to work with our kids at home, because even now we're heading back to school, some kids can go back to school, but will the schools be open for long? Or you know, what happens when your kid is sick? A lot of us are struggling with a lot of new situations. So I've invited for this little pilot project, I've invited three local moms who own businesses and who are part of our group to come and share their experience and their wisdom with us and help us kind of connect and know some of the resources that are available to us as moms in Guelph. So I really hope that this will be helpful and I would find it valuable to get your feedback, whether this is helpful or how it could be more helpful. And if a lot of people love it, I will continue doing more episodes. So you can easily find me in the Guelph Mom Sporting Moms Facebook group or on Facebook in general, or you can email me at Tamsin at TamsinConnects.com. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the episode. So hi, Guelph Moms. It's Tamsin. I'm a community leader and the founder of Guelph Moms, supporting moms on Facebook. And this is the Tamsin Connects Guelph Moms podcast. So I've created this podcast to connect you with local resources and ultimately with each other. So I'm so happy. Hi, Danielle. I'm so happy to introduce you to Danielle Deshaw. She's the uh, host and primary creative instigator of the C-suite on Rogers. And she is a, um, she is a women's career guide and mentor. And that is a lot of what you do on your show, right? You have people come on who, who can help guide women to make better choices with their careers. And um, before we start about the um, reason why I invited you on, I do want to start the podcast with something that we're celebrating about being a mom in Guelph. So you were mentioning something to me that you're happy about. Absolutely. So first of all, thank you for having me on the show. This is exciting. And yeah. you, when, you, when you ask me the question about, you know, what, what's so great about being a Guelph mom, we were having a dialogue around that. And I have to say something I'm really happy for about being in Guelph is having so many restaurants um, that we were able to kind of go to during the pandemic. We had kind of made that commitment to eat out at least once a week and try different restaurants. And I got a teenage boy, so it requires bigger meal sizes. <laughs> and I have to, I'm lucky because they're, they're pretty open to trying different things. So we, we tried different restaurants. So I'm really happy, you know, in Guelph that we had so many restaurants that, that were open and accessible with their, you know, contact free or con contactless. Uh, pickups and deliveries just so that you know we could continue to feed our families and you know some bigger stomachs and, and support the community as well so that's something I'm really happy um, to be a mom about in well okay and I'm I said I'm gonna do a shout out to my son's school we live in the south end he's at Westminster Woods um, so many wonderful people there and uh, especially Tommy's grade three teacher, Miss Montague, she really went all out with the online learning and just was an amazing creative resource. And Tommy was struggling a little bit with certain things and she reached out and, and helped him get a little more support. And it was, it was just, I was just thrilled with them. And, and the online learning has been a struggle, but certainly they went above and beyond to try to help us out. And just overall with our school experience in general, they've just been amazing. So. Wonderful. Yeah. Yay! I just, and I may end up shouting out to them every week. I don't know, <laughs> but, but I've, I've just been really, really thrilled with the school system here. And so that's something I'm really grateful for. So I remember what I was actually a guest on your show. I think it was, um, well, the recording was in October, I think. And I mentioned I was writing um, a book, a chapter of a book about the paradox of success. 
and that really seemed to resonate with you. So my idea behind the paradox of success is that we often are taught by society all the stuff, especially as women, all the, all the check marks that we're supposed to have, you know, the job, the education, the job, the spouse, the kids, the house, whatever. And, and we can check off all those boxes, but for some of us, it's just not enough, mm. right? But when we have all the boxes checked off, we feel like we ought to be grateful and we ought to feel lucky and we ought to realize how fortunate we are. And when we don't, we almost feel worse because we feel alone. We feel shame that we aren't just happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And so you, I think you have, you seem to really resonate with that and you've had a lot of um, your own story that, that kind of fits into that. So do you, mm -hmm. I would love for you to share that with us because I think there's a lot of people who struggle right now, of course, with the pandemic, a lot of us have a lot of things that we're unhappy about, but even, um, all the things around creating your own version of success, I think is, is going to be really, really important as we move forward. Mm -hmm. If that makes Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. I mean, I remember that segment when you were in as a guest and it was kind of in between when we were just getting ready to start our conversation. Yeah. And you mentioned this and I remember sitting there in the chair. I'm like, Oh, Oh my gosh. It was just not, it's a great topic, but it was, it almost kind of was that, that click. That kind of went, oh my gosh, that's, that's part of what my experience was and kind of where more of my journey around my career, you know, where it became or where it started was, you know, when I was finishing university, it was probably about third or fourth year, I took a communications class and we talked about, you know, in our careers, it's all about career communication. And we were talking about in our careers, you know, the different, um, the different titles that are, are in different organizations. So you had supervisor, manager, director, VP, and they really got into the definition of what each of those roles were. I remember sitting in that class and saying, oh, well, based on the definitions, I wanna be a manager. And it kind of, from that, it became, well, I wanna be a manager by 40. And okay, so in, with being a manager, I wanna make X amount. So by 40, I want to be a manager. I want to be making a certain amount of money. And that became this goal that, you know, as I graduated in 20, you know, around 25, I'm like, oh, you know, 40, that's, that's. 40 feels a long way for 25. That's so old. Um, you know, it wasn't something I consciously thought about as I went through the years, but it definitely became this goal. By 40, this is what I want. And I achieved that. So I was, I was really big on moving and a lot of movement in my career. So typically every two years um, or less, I was trying new opportunities. Very grateful to be able to have the opportunities to really just grow and expand and almost continue to add on to what I had learned before. So at 38, I, I got that manager role. I was a manager. I was making, I had the title I wanted. I had the salary I wanted. I'm like, woo, I'm here. You know, 38 didn't seem as old as it was when I was <laughs> 25. But by 40, I said, you know what? I'm here. I have exactly what I thought I wanted, but something wasn't connecting. And it was really at that age, I said, you know what? I'm, I need to take a step back because something's not jiving. I'm like, and there was this idea that there, there would be, there, there could be more. So I actually took what I called a, what I call a mid, mid career retirement. And I stepped back to kind of look at, oh my gosh, I've been driving forward in my career, focusing on the what, you know, what do I want? What do I want to be? What do I want to do? And I hadn't really put any time and effort into thinking, who did I want to be? Yeah. You know, not in that role in like, in that journey, you know, as, as a spouse, I was a you know, mom of two young kids at the time. And I was just, I was so focused on work. And I thought that was success and having the title and having the career and having all those hours that you were, it, you know, that become a defi definition of success. And when I stepped away from that, all of a sudden I looked around and I was like, <gasps> So the paradox became, I had everything I, and I wasn't happy. I, I went, I wanted more. And then when I stepped away, it became, oh, who am I <laughs> really answering that question? Like, so I'm no longer the what, so who, who am I? And that was really where a whole other journey of self-discovery 
that really has brought me to where I am today. That's where it all started. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I, I really think that, that that's a, it's an interesting thing because part of success should be about who you want to be in the world. People talk mm -hmm. about that. And we also, I also kind of wonder if people think like Oprah Winfrey is never unhappy. You know, mm -hmm. like we have these, these, these ideas of what we strive for. Maybe, maybe like if, if people want to be a talk show host or whatever, Oprah might be there, whoever your mega example of success is. It's like, they probably still have bad days. You know, mm -hmm. I, and I just don't think that a lot of people, I think the connection a lot of people think that there will be is when you tick off all the boxes, you don't ever have to be unhappy again. And mm -hmm. it might not be a conscious thing, but it's like, we're taught, I think by commercials and all these things, when we get the thing, we'll be happy. Yeah. And, and our culture is so based around avoiding negative emotions that when people get to where they they thought they'd be happy and then they're not they're like well what the, what the heck was this all for and what the heck do i do now and how can i talk to somebody about being unhappy when i've got mm -hmm. everything i said i wanted yeah and i think that's really key is the whole how do you talk to someone about yeah when you think you have the, the check box and you have it all and, and you're not happy you're not it's almost sometimes it's just not even you're not satisfied because there's something more that you can feel that you're doing or somehow, you know, for years I felt I was like misaligned. It was, okay. a, and it was, it was a hard, I remember having conversations with my husband saying, I just, sometimes I feel like it's my life. I know it's my life, but it's not my life. Like I'm somehow living something that I'm not aligned to. And this was, you know, years before I even started, you know, doing personal development and a lot mm -hmm. of mindset work. And it was just like, there was this misalignment and it, it happened at some point in my career. I can't put my finger on, on where, but it's really what I look at now and when I make choices now about my career and what I'm doing and the fact that I, I work in a corporate, you know, I have a day career in the corporate world and I have this side journey where I'm the, the, a TV host, you know, that like, that's what makes me alive in that. It's funny that the alignment of those two worlds and being able to exist in both and connect them together, I feel aligned. Like this is who I am. And I finally learned how to embrace all of that after all this time. Oh, I, I'm saying cool a lot. But anyway, <laughs> I, I think that it's, it's really interesting you talking about fitting in almost different, different lives but they're all coexisting. And I think most, as mothers, most of us have to do that to some extent. And yet we find, do you have any insight into how you manage to kind of avoid like guilt? Or do you experience guilt trying to balance multiple things? Because we all, we all have our kids to balance, our whatever relationships, our friendships, our family, other family, career, there's just, there's so much. And especially now with a lot of us experiencing kids being home, mm -hmm. there's more demands on us for, from family and yet not less from other areas of our lives. So I'm really interested in that, in that balancing. So, so you're trying to have almost two careers. Yes. Which I like, I, I'm glad you seem so happy because it sounds <laughs> like a lot of work. And I say happy and to be more, you know, I'm smiling because again, it's this, not just the idea of two careers, but it's all of me. Yeah. And I finally, finally, I get to embrace all of me and really bringing it together. It, it's not like this happened overnight. There's been little, little pieces and what I learned and, you know, and I was very fortunate to have the ability to take a step back from my professional career. You know, for two and a half years, I was an entrepreneur. I had a business focused on leadership development for women and girls. And during that time, I really learned the, how it's key to have self-care. So really kind of almost like making me my best friend. And what is it that I need to recharge, to stay focused, and to really give my best self to everybody else? So I do a lot of, I do meditation. I've got a vision board now that I never used to do. And these are things that I've been, you know, integrated into my life. So 
I don't think of things as balance because the idea of balance, you always think of like the scales of justice where it's 50, 50, um, and life is hardly ever 50, 50. Yeah. So what I think about how can I best integrate all of who I am into the same, um, same amount of time that everyone has every day. So I, I wake up earlier than you know, I, I would like to, I prefer to stay up late and sleep in. Um, but I, I make the commitment to get up earlier in the morning so that I can kind of give myself that self care time. And then I work. So I, I it's full time, full time work. Um, so for me, it's more it's with, with the work and the, the side journey with the show, it becomes, I do what I, I can do. I don't necessarily overcommit with the show. I try to stick to a schedule. Um, and it's all about you know, if I can't answer emails right away, I don't. If I, if it takes me 24 hours to get to them, that's, that's what I do. And I really focus on the weekend, trying not to work. So a lot of the conversations I have regarding the show, they happen um, in the evenings or on weekends. You know, I'm on shutdown this week, so I'm on vacation. So that's what we're able to talk during the day. So it's really figuring out what is my schedule, blocking in time for myself, my family, and both careers, and figure out how to, to integrate that. And then having the, the conversations I need to have. So when, when the idea, so when I, I pitched the show and it took a while for it to actually um, co come to fruition. And when it finally, when I finally got that, that email to say, yeah, we're, we're gonna move forward. I, I sat by my manager and senior, senior manager down and I said, okay, this is what's happening. And I was very clear and upfront with, you know, I'm volunteering in the community. This is a volunteer position, but it's not like I'm just working in the sidelines. I'm going to be on TV. so a little more noticeable. I wanted to let them know and be very, very uh, transparent with what I was doing. So that way they, they understood what I was doing outside of work. And then I had the conversation with my husband. Okay, so how do we integrate this? And what time do I need? What space do I need in the house? And how does that schedule look like? I got two kids uh, who both are in competitive sports, uh, very busy at nighttime, they're in school. And so it's just figure out how, how do we keep having those conversations to make sure everything can happen and that we're still supporting the kids. I still have self-care time. We have family time and that everything can still kind of happen. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I remember there were other people during the recording session that I was at your show and th they were talking about balance, right? And I remember that conversation stuck with me for quite a while after and I especially remember them talking about like having cal and just you're like you're talking about having blocks of time, right? That you're, the schedule. And I am not a scheduler. It's like, I'm just, I'm, I like to be flexible. I like to be in the moment. It's not always the best thing. Like, like we, I do schedule things and I show up, but, <laughs> but for me, what I realized balance really means for me, it is very emotional and it's just, Having that feeling that where I am right now is where is the best place for me to be right now. Mm -hmm. Because, and I think that's part of, part of the guilt piece too, is just that I hear a lot of people say, well, when I'm at work, I wish I was with my kid. And when I'm with my kid, I think about work. And it's, it's not having this sense of right here, right now, I'm here and this is where I'm meant to be. And I know whenever I'm doing anything that's not with my son, there, there is that, that shard that says maybe he needs me, maybe I should be with him. But I know the times when I've felt most balanced in that sense, like right here, right now is where I'm supposed to be, was when my son unexpectedly needed me. And I could cancel everything else. I could just, I remember he was sick for a few weeks uh, and I think he was out of school for actually about a week right around Christmas time. And the day we came back, his best friend said to him, oh, terrific, you're back because today's the school play where we're going to be on stage. And he, my son just melted down. He did not want to do that at all. Um, and so just, you know, we went up, we talked to his teacher, whatever, whatever. And it ended up that I just went and I sat with him and he sat with me in the audience. And then when the play part was over, then he was fine to go back to school and to spend the rest of the day in school. But I was supposed to be at a breakfast meeting. Yes. And, and yet, I didn't regret missing it. 
I did, I was just like, nope, my son needs me and this is where I need to be right now. And I just felt like so calm and centered and balanced and like, this is where I need to be. And if you can manage to do that with all your different things, maybe, I don't know if it's because your children are older and maybe, and they're becoming more independent. I, I feel mm. like that's going to change, change how I see my own life balance when that happens. Yeah. And it could, I think definitely the age of, of my kids played a role. When I first you know, left my career or took that you know, mid-career retirement, they were younger and they wanted me there. They wanted me to you know, walk them to school. They wanted yeah. me to go. Like, it, it, was, it was wonderful. It was kind of like reconnecting with them in such a different way. But by the time you know, the two and a half years came around, I, I was thinking, you know, it's probably I was having this yearning to return to kind of the, the corporate work uh, workspace. And they kind of came to me and they said a conversation like, mom, you know what? We don't need you walking us to school anymore. We're okay if, if you don't come. And so it was really neat that we had the conversation. They really instigated the conversation to basically tell me that we're okay now. And I took that as saying, you know what? Okay, my work here right now is done. And because I was also feeling yeah. that, that pull back um, into the professional work workplace and like, Okay, so I felt I felt really good making that return, uh, return to the workplace, and knowing that knowing that whatever time I spent for the last two and a half years with them, it was good, and that it was okay for me to now start a different phase. And it's not like I, I wasn't going to be around; just always going to be around differently. But they uh, they were they were vocal, like "Mom, yeah, you don't you, we don't need walks." <laughs> That's Even neat. Now, it is nice with a younger child who, who likes to be dependent to hear that that might happen someday. <laughs> but yeah. Now, now I, they need you differently. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was reading something that tugged at my heart the other day. It was, it was something about how, you know, you have this child around all the time and then all of a sudden the space where they were is empty because they've gone off and they're living their own life and they're doing their own thing. And I'm like, but it just um, is really, I, I love what you're saying about the having those conversations, because a lot of the time when we think of, pers of self-care or personal growth or um, success even, we often think about it as this individual journey and you have to find yourself and all of these things. But, but especially as women, I think we, we need to be integrated into our families and have those conversations and just, um, I'm glad your family has been supportive mm -hmm. of your journey because I think a lot of us, um, there's the, the, we often get told when we want to change, everyone's going to be against us because they aren't going to want us to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Or it's the fear of who you're changing into or how is yeah. this going to impact me when you change? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I'd say my, my family, like they've been great. They've been rocks. And yeah, I just, I could not have done any of, of this and continue to do what I do without, without them. So yes, it's very nice to have that support. I know. <laughs> <laughs> very grateful very grateful yes but what I think you know, something you were saying was when um that made that made me think about something as well when you were talking about how you had to cancel like your breakfast meeting in order to yeah. go to your sons and sit with your son and spend time like do you find though when you make those commitments and you make those decisions that you know like this is what a priority for me and you're leaving a commitment in order to really attend to a priority do you find that other people connect with that or do they understand I don't want to work with anyone who doesn't mm. I, I honestly have never gotten flack from people whenever I'm trying to make an appointment with someone this was actually just more or less an informal networking so I didn't even I hadn't told people I was coming I didn't feel I had to tell people I wasn't coming it was a it was something I had planned to do yeah. um, but I have had to cancel appointments with people because my son he has special needs and he often um, getting him to go to school in the morning. I, that's one good thing about not having to go to school anymore is that it, it has made our mornings a little bit easier. Um, and I just, 
people either know me enough that they already know that's part of my life or I make it very clear to people, especially I, I wouldn't make appointments unless I had almost no option before 10 o'clock mm -hmm. because his school starts at 830. That would give me time to either know things were going to happen and I could make 10 o'clock or to get in touch with someone and say this, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to reschedule. Um, so that is something that I, I tend to, I have a high sense of responsibility. I don't like to, to not make commitments, but I just let people know that what my home life is and that it's somewhat unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And then to try to let people know at least half an hour in advance if I can't make it because especially if somebody's coming from another part of town or sometimes I meet with people from Kitchener or Cambridge or whatever. So, so just to try to be considerate of them, but I know mostly I deal with mothers mm -hmm. and moms tend to get it. <laughs> right. I've had, I've had people, a lot of people have to cancel on me because their child is sick or whatever. I'm like, oh, I totally get it. Totally fine. Thank you for letting me know. Um, and yeah, I don't like it when people just don't show up, but yeah, so no, I've never had any sort of, um, but I've, I've always been an entrepreneur since my son was born. I haven't had a regular job. I taught one course at the university, but that's as close to a real quote unquote real job as I've had. And I think entrepreneurs in general tend to also be more risk risk tolerant yes and that's not necessarily what's the most relevant but most um accepting just that life is unpredictable mm, like flexible or agile yeah. Or yeah 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 so that's something that i've found so so we just have a couple minutes i think we're we're at about 25 and i wanted to give you a chance to let people know a little bit more about how to find your show because you said there's a website people can go to to see past episodes Absolutely. So the C-Suite, it's on Rogers TV. So rogerstv.com slash the C-Suite. And the C really, it's, it's about, the C stands for choice. So it's kind okay. of that tongue in cheek idea. It's that take from that traditional corner suite. Um, and really it's about choice and helping women to create choices in their careers and helping to connect their challenges of today to, again, those career solutions and resources and support that are available by experts right in our own community here in southern ontario okay awesome so does it is there a particular time it, i sorry we don't actually have tv so i've seen everything i've seen of yours i've actually seen on the computer which is nice kind of on demand but is there a regular airtime that it comes there up on is. rogers yes yeah so it shows on the tv so rogers tv cable 20 and then all the segments they are they're all online so eight from the very beginning of the season, we started last July, so it's been a year. Our first episode up until our latest are all online streaming, so career support and guidance. You know, anytime you need it, whatever topic you need, there's lots of different topics to go and, and look at. So it's all live and available when you on demand. Awesome. All right, and it was a lot of fun. So, and thank you. This was a lot of fun too. Thanks a lot for joining us, and um, hopefully we will catch you on the C-suite. Absolutely. Thank you, Tansen, okay. so much. It's fun. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Tansen Connects Guelph Moms podcast. I would love feedback from you if you found it helpful, if you'd like something to change, if you'd like me to have a particular person or topic covered, or if you'd like to be a guest. And you can reach me through Guelph Moms Supporting Moms on Facebook, or you can email me at Tamsin at TamsinConnects.com. Thanks a lot for your time. I really appreciate it. There are three episodes in this pilot series. So if you haven't checked out the other ones, at least to see if the topic might interest you, please be my guest and do that and let me know what you think.